Ten years ago, the Jupiter C rocket launched America's first satellite into orbit. Since the 31 pound Explorer 1 began its journey, the United States has launched over 500 rockets from Cape Kennedy. These included almost 100 unmanned satellites and lunar and deep space probes. And some 40 vehicles launched in the manned space program of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. New types of spacecraft and launch vehicles required larger launch facilities. In 1967, at NASA's spaceport on Merritt Island, adjacent to Cape Kennedy, the largest and most complex U.S. space vehicle, the Apollo Saturn V, was prepared for launch. From here, our astronauts will begin their journey to the moon. This is the spaceport in 1968. <laughs> Many achievements in space have required the efforts of the government industry team at the John F. which is most of NASA's rockets. In early January 1968, the last of seven surveyor spacecraft was prepared for launch. This involved an Atlas Centaur rocket, which hurled surveyor towards a soft landing on the moon, providing new knowledge of our nearest neighbor. In March, a large OGO spacecraft, which contained 24 scientific experiments, was prepared for launch by an Atlas Agena rocket to gain further knowledge of the Sun-Earth relationship. This 100th unmanned launch was NASA's final mission for the Atlas Agena. In the future, the Agena stage will be replaced by the more powerful Centaur rocket. Delta vehicles, along with the Atlas Agena, have launched most of our unmanned spacecraft. Delta has successfully placed into orbit all of the commercial communications satellites and all of the ESA weather satellites. The Atlas Agena has hurled a variety of scientific satellites into Earth orbit, launched two series of moon photo spacecraft, the Ranger and Lunar Orbiter, and hurled Mariner spacecraft on journeys to Mars and Venus. Agena played an important part in the Gemini manned flights. The success of Gemini, rendezvous, spacewalks, and dockings paved the way to the manned Apollo flight to the moon. The first 1968 launch in the Apollo program tested the lunar craft. An extensive series of tests and inspections preceded the launch. Two astronauts will someday land on the moon in a vehicle like this. Among the equipment used to test the spacecraft is the computerized acceptance checkout equipment. This system automatically makes thousands of tests of the spacecraft and displays the results for test engineers. After passing ground tests, the lunar craft was placed in an adapter unit which shields it in early flight. The lunar craft was next mated with its launch vehicle, the Saturn 1B rocket. By January 22nd, preparations were completed for the launch of the 15th vehicle in the Saturn series. The launch team encountered two major delays in the 22-hour countdown. 
the problems were resolved, and in late afternoon, the countdown reached ignition. Once in space, the lunar craft underwent several engine firing tests. The success of the flight brought the first manned Apollo mission one step closer. Astronauts practice space missions in the flight crew training building at Kennedy Space Center. This maze of equipment includes two simulators in which three-man Apollo crews practice every step of an Earth orbital mission, as well as a flight to the moon and back. The spacecraft simulator is surrounded by devices which utilize film, slides, and models to represent star fields, lunar and Earth surfaces, and the in-space docking maneuver. A manned spacecraft center team follows each move of the astronauts in the mock spacecraft. These instructors and test the crew's reactions to problems which might occur in actual flight. A lunar module simulator permits two astronauts to practice the moon landing, the liftoff from the moon, and return to the orbiting Apollo. While astronauts practice, technicians at Kennedy Space Center test the equipment which will track the liftoff and follow the Apollo craft in space. This 30-foot diameter antenna is one of the tracking stations which make up the manned communications network. Stationed near Cape Kennedy are tracking ships at Port Canaveral and tracking aircraft at Patrick Air Force Base, which are also used in the communications network operated by the Goddard Space Flight Center. Equipment in Kennedy's Central Instrumentation Facility records and stores thousands of measurements made during pre-launch and launch phases. This includes a high-speed computer, telemetry receiving station, a sound wave and pressure analysis laboratory, and a timing station which generates countdown signals. This equipment passed a vital operational test, as did other launch equipment when the first Apollo Saturn V vehicle was launched in November 1967. Stages of the Saturn V are manufactured in several areas of the United States and delivered by barge and plane to the Kennedy Space Center. The stages are moved into the 52-story vehicle assembly building where they are first inspected and then prepared for assembly. Each stage is lifted high above the floor and erected on a mobile launch platform. The assembly of the three stages requires extensive care and coordination. The instrument unit, which guides and controls the rocket, tops off the Saturn V. The Apollo spacecraft is then mated to the Saturn. After many electrical and mechanical tests, the Apollo Saturn V is moved to the launch pad three miles away. A six million pound transporter carries the mobile launcher and the Apollo Saturn V over a special roadway. The trip is made at less than one mile per hour. The transporter steadies its cargo as the huge vehicle moves to the top of the launch pad. Once the mobile launcher is in place, the transporter carries a 400-foot tall service structure up the slope. Circular platforms encompass the spacecraft to allow technicians to perform final inspections. Pad tests of the vehicle and spacecraft are monitored from the launch control center. Engineers in this firing room also monitored the testing performed inside the vehicle assembly building. 
Following weeks of testing, two major tests were conducted in early November 1967. These were the countdown demonstration test and the flight readiness test, which review activities from countdown to mission completion. The terminal countdown for Apollo 4 began November 6th. On the afternoon of November 8th, the mobile service structure was removed. These service arms carry fuel, power, and communications lines to the Apollo Saturn and remain attached to the vehicle until liftoff. As night approached, fueling began. This included pumping 450,000 gallons of liquid oxygen and 300,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen into the tanks of the Saturn. Throughout the night, the countdown continued without any problems. As the countdown approached zero at 7 a.m. on November 9th, it demonstrated the superb cooperation and effective teamwork of the government industry organization which made this moment possible. Four, three, two, one. Zero. the mighty rocket climbed skyward atop an enormous pillar of flame as its five engines generated seven and one half million pounds of thrust. At 40 miles altitude, cameras on board the rocket recorded first stage separation. Separation was clearly visible to the thousands who watched the huge rocket climb into space. With second stage ignition, an adapter unit was cast off to reveal a spectacular view of the Earth. Seven minutes later, the third stage of the Saturn ignited to hurl 140 tons, the heaviest payload ever launched by the United States into a 118 mile high parking orbit. After coasting for two orbits, the third stage reignited to send Apollo deeper into space. As the adapter panels deployed, Apollo separated from the third stage, and the spacecraft engine was fired to increase its altitude to 11,200 miles above the Earth. Before re-entry, Apollo separated from its service module. With its blunt end forward, the spacecraft re-entered the Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour and splashed down in the Pacific Ocean within sight of its recovery ship. Having met test objectives, Apollo 4, the first flight of America's lunar rocket, was an unqualified success. The mission proved the performance of the launch vehicle and the facilities of the spaceport. The nation's goals in space, which include landing American astronauts on the moon and returning them safely to Earth, seem closer than ever. Beyond these lie the planets and endless galaxies, beckoning man 
to an adventurous future in space.